What's up guys? What's growing on? So I wanted to make a short video for you here this morning and you could see well, I don't know if you can see looks like I'm smoking. It's a uh, like 41. Oh, there it is I wanted to make you all this quick video this morning and I'm getting blinded here. Woo! I'm gonna have to restart this with my sunglasses on hold tight Woo! What's up guys? What's growing on? I'm back light was blinding me there, so I had to put on my shades. Um, but I wanna to talk to y'all a little bit about no irrigation and gardening like a forest. You know, uh, Jim uses no irrigation, we use no irrigation, and we're constantly getting comments, you know, how do you grow without irrigation? How are you able to do this? And you know, just over my head here, you'll see a brown bamboo. We haven't had a lot of rain the last couple of weeks here in Florida, there's another clump over there on the other side. And you know, they're a little bit stressed out right now at the moment. You know, they've, they're definitely crying for that water and I'm not gonna run over there and put a hose on them or come home and try to baby this stuff. You know, I really kind of, uh, I tend to cull out the things that, you know, are, are, are sensitive, that are weak, you know, and, and, and focus more on the things that are tough and easy to grow and that wanna grow here. So I'm not, you know, I'm not growing weak stuff and you know, something I'll tell you, you know, going to Jim's place over the years, I had been there a couple times in the winter, he's growing these annual vegetables and you know, all his veggies are wilted and laying down in a mid hot day, you know, and I'm like, whoa, you know, things look a little, little sad, are you gonna water them? He's like, no, he's like, they're tough. They're going to recover. They'll be fine. You know, they're going to come up in the evening and by going out there and watering those, you know, and kind of give them that IV of water, you know, it's, it, we're creating weak plants, you know, weak trees, you know, we can create stronger trees um, by, you know, letting them kind of thrive and, you know, kind of stress a little bit, you know, I don't, Jim's not out there watering that stuff in midday, you know, and, and something I'll point out, you know, look at a forest, you know, look at these, these areas that are, you know, not maintained by us. You know, there, there is no irrigation, there is no fertilizer, you know, it's a very diverse type system. So, you know, everything we do out here on Sand Hill Farm, you know, is almost that same way. I mean, I have some micro irrigation over here inside my greenhouse. Um, I have some micro irrigation out in the front field where I have those figs. But for the most part, you know, we use heavy mulch. Um, we try to plant when we're going into rainy season, that doesn't always work out. But we mimic nature in everything we do here. You know, we're constantly protecting the soil with those ground covers. You know, so I don't know about you all, but I, I have friends, you know, that live on preserves and live up against nature areas. And, you know, we, we always are typically going through a drought, a drought here, should I say, in springtime, that March through May, sometimes through June in Florida. It's becoming more and more common every year. It's not like we get home from a long day of work, you know, come outside and look at the woods and, oh, that needs water, or that needs fertilizer, you know, that's a very self-maintained system. Um, there's a lot of those pioneer species in there. There's a lot of those nitrogen fixing species in there. So, you know, just like the forest is self-maintaining, so is everything that we do. You know, we try to mimic nature in all of our systems here. So, you know, we have very low irrigation input. My only irrigation, like I said, greenhouse, figs, nursery. Um, everything else is thriving on neglect. And, you know, something I'll point out, you know, just the other day, like I said, we were going through a little bit of a dry spout. Um, you know, some of these low quats over here, whoop, some of these uh, loquats over here had some droopy leaves, you know, and that's a tree that's not native here in Florida, but that has naturalized, you know, it's all over the state of Florida right now. And I'm not going to run over there, you know, and put some irrigation on that tree and, and baby it. Um, I'm going to wait and see what happens, you know, and that might affect that fruit set a little bit, but we're on 11 acres. I'm not going to have 25 zones of irrigation out here babying everything. I mean, this whole entire area right here behind me has zero irrigation and that's that area where that, you know, that low quad I was talking to you about is. Let me show you that thing, hold on. What up? So Coast Guard chopper just flew over, kind of messed up my video, but I'm back, don't worry. And right here behind me, I've got a low quad. You can kind of see that guy right there. Um, and it's a little bit stressed, you know, and typically I can tell the leaves are a little bit closed, they're a little bit more spaced out than they normally are. And when it's raining, it's, you know, they're a little fuller, it's a lot more lush. And like I had mentioned, you know, I'm not gonna run over here and, and throw a hose to this thing or try to, you know, emergency water it. You know, if the tree is tough, it's gonna make it through, it's gonna survive. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna become stronger that way. So I might not get the fruit set I want off of that tree this year, but I have other loquats, you know, that are just over here in the center along the front of the property that seem to be holding more moisture that are setting flowers really good this year. So, 
you know, main point of this video was to just point out, you know, I, I get a lot of skeptics out there, you know, how, how are you growing without irrigation? I know Jim gets these same comments too, and, and we're mimicking nature in everything that we do. You know, like I had mentioned, there is no irrigation. There is no fertilizer in a forest. If we mimic this in our systems, it can be very much the same. So obviously this doesn't work on a Curtis Stone market gardener scale. I mean, that's a, um, an annual system, very shallow roots. It's gonna require that type of water. But in these perennial crops and these tree crops, you know, they tend to have a lot deeper roots. They're able to travel lower down into the soil profile, you know, access those water and nutrients that, you know, those annuals can't get. So by having these ground covers, by having this heavy mulch, you know, that's mimicking everything that happens in nature, everything that happens in a forest. You know, if a, a limb falls down in a forest or leaves fall down in a forest, you know, we're not out there raking it up or picking it up. You know, as soon as that limb hits the ground, you know, it's like the mycelium hears it. They know there's a food source there. They come over, they start breaking it down. They start feeding off of it. So, you know, I, I would just suggest, you know, obviously looking at these permaculture books a little bit, you know, a lot of these concepts are out there. So, you know, gardening like a forest, you don't have to have irrigation. So hope you guys got something out of this short video. Lighting's a little off this morning. I uh, hope you all have a great day. Please like, subscribe, share. Woo, I'm getting blinded. Don't forget, pound it.